Well, here's another problem with a tangent segment, and we've got a radius that we're going to solve for uh, an obvious Pythagorean problem. We can see that we'll have the radius and this blue side 9 as legs, and we'll need to come up with an expression for the hypotenuse, and we're just going to combine the exterior portion and the radius again. Making our substitution, problem looks like this. Remember, we need to expand here to make this a perfect square trinomial. And very conveniently, we've got an R squared on both sides. This is going to happen every single time in one of these problems. And now it's a linear equation, very easy to solve. And let's, oops, let's subtract the 36. And then we can divide by the 12. And we can see we have 45 twelfths. We can simplify that a little bit. 15 fourths or 3 and 3 quarters. And we're done. Now here's a fun problem that takes us back to our constructions. And this we've got two circles. We have a common exterior tangent segment. The two circles are externally tangent to each other at this point. And that means that's QP and this point are collinear. And I've got the radii of 5 and 3 respectively. So let's review a couple things. First off, the right angles are up there. Because the radi uh, we all know that the tangents are perpendicular to the radii at the point of tangency. So then we just have to think about this is 5 as well. And I guess this 3 down here is 3 as well. So we know that the distance or of QP is going to be 5 plus 3 or 8. So let me move these out of the way. And we're going to draw an auxiliary figure to help figure this out. Imagine if I construct a rectangle right here. Opposite sides congruent. So I've got 3 and 3. And what I've got left out of this trapezoid that I had here, what I've got left is a little right triangle. And I can see that these sides of the right triangle, there's two remaining here for this leg. The B is my unknown and, uh, and the hypotenuse. QP is the hypotenuse of this triangle right here. So let's solve for that. And we could just employ the Pythagorean theorem but you know that we like to make it a little easier. We've got a factor of 2, so we're going to employ the simplified or sometimes called reduced triangle principle. And I'll solve the triangle as if the leg were 1 and the hypotenuse were 4. So just blasting right through the Pythagorean theorem. This is so easy. And right away, I can see in this case, B is radical 15. But since we are using the similar triangle and each of these segments is one half the measure of this triangle, then that would mean that I simply take that, multiplying it by two. Oops, and it's right there. My rat, this would, if this side, sorry, if this B is radical 15, then this is two radical 15 or twice. And therefore, since the original figure I constructed, or I constructed a rectangle, B is congruent to this segment, RS, and the segment RS must have a measure of 2 radical 15. A lot going on there, so play this one over a couple times. Make sure you know it for the test. Here's an example where we're going to make use of a common internal tangent, and that internal tangent is RS between the two circles AB. Now, I've already got it prettied up for you, we can see the two triangles, and we know we've got vertical angles right there. Vertical angles are congruent. I know I've got perpendicular or right angles at the point of tangency, so I know that these two triangles are going to be similar by angle-angle. Now once we've, once we've got that worked out, all we've got to do is imagine which proportion to use. Easy enough, if you need the visualization skills, I'm taking this the tan triangle and rotating it towards the green one. But you might be able to see that anyways. 
and you should be able to visualize. Now I've got two ways to write this. Red is to blue, as purple is to magenta, their corresponding sides. Or I could say that the red is to the magenta, as the, I'm sorry, as red is to purple, as blue is to magenta, and that would be this ratio, which incidentally just swaps the means. And either way, we already went over this in a previous, well, that was back in chapter six, but no matter how you do it, you'll come up with 25 for the missing side. And we could have just as well have solved for one of the radii if we were given the other. So um, you can expect to see a problem like that on the happy test. All right, that's it for this lesson.